Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm sure many of you have heard about this, but if you haven't, the NASA community lost one of its own a couple of weeks ago. William Anders, the Apollo 8 astronaut famous for capturing this iconic Earthrise photograph, passed away on June 7th, 2024, after the single engine plane that he was piloting crashed in the waters north of Puget Sound. He was 90 years old. Now, William Anders had an incredible career. He went to the U.S. Naval Academy, then on to the U.S. Air Force, received a master's degree in nuclear engineering. Okay, William, just making us all look bad. And in 1963, Anders was chosen to be a member of NASA's third group of astronauts. With Neil Armstrong, he was part of the Gemini 11 backup crew in 1966. And two years later, Anders served as the lunar module pilot for the Apollo 8 mission, alongside command module pilot Jim Lovell and mission commander Frank Borman. And the trio launched into space on the first crewed flight of the Saturn V rocket. I actually covered the Apollo 8 mission in another video about six months ago when I went to Charleston, South Carolina and saw a replica of the Apollo 8 capsule on the Yorktown. So if you haven't seen that video and want more details on the Apollo 8 mission, I will post a link to it in the description below. But in reading more about Bill Anders after his passing, I became curious about this Earthrise photo. And so I started poking around on the internet as I want to do. And I found this amazing video that NASA put out like a decade ago that explains and shows how this photograph was taken. And using photo mosaics and elevation data from LRO, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the video was able to recreate the moment the crew first saw and photographed the Earth rising from behind the moon. The narrator of the video is Andrew Chaikin, author of A Man on the Moon, widely regarded as the definitive account of the Apollo missions. The video uses the actual onboard audio to set the scene for this amazing visualization of the view, both inside and outside the spacecraft, the moment the photograph was taken. And it does not go down exactly as you might think. There's some scrambling, maybe a little impatience. You can tell that they are not entirely prepared for the moment. So it's like a bit of a mad dash in order to get it captured. Anyway, it felt very fly on the wall. I loved it. And I thought it might be a nice mini tribute to William Anders to share exactly what they went through to get this photo taken. I'll let the video take over now and I'll come back at the end. I'll also take over the narration at some point during the video because of music issues. Oh, YouTube. Enjoy, guys. On December 24th, 1968, Apollo 8 astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders became the first humans to orbit the moon and the first to witness the magnificent sight called Earthrise. Now we can see this historic event exactly as the astronauts saw it. Thanks to data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. LRO's superb global lunar maps, combined with the astronauts' own photographs, reveal where Apollo 8 was over the moon, and even its precise orientation in space, when the astronauts first saw the Earth rising above the moon's barren horizon. It happened a few minutes after 10.30 a.m. Houston time as Apollo 8 was coming around from the far side of the moon for the fourth time. Mission Commander Frank Borman was in the left-hand seat, preparing to turn the spacecraft to a new orientation according to the flight plan. Navigator Jim Lovell was in the spacecraft's lower equipment bay, about to make sightings on lunar landmarks with the onboard sextant. And Bill Anders was in the right-hand seat, observing the moon through his side window and taking pictures with the Hasselblad still camera fitted with a 250 millimeter telephoto lens. Meanwhile, a second Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter lens was mounted in Borman's front facing window, the so-called rendezvous window, photographing the moon on an automatic timer, a new picture every 20 seconds. These photographs matched with LRO's high resolution terrain maps showed that Borman was still turning Apollo 8 when the Earth appeared. 
It was only because of the timing of this rotation that the Earth rise, which had happened on Apollo 8's three previous orbits, but was unseen by the astronauts, now came into view in Bill Anders' side window. Here's what it looked like as recreated from LRO data by Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio. You'll hear the astronauts' voices as captured by Apollo 8's onboard tape recorder, beginning with Frank Borman announcing the start of the roll maneuver. And you'll see the rising Earth move from one window to another as Apollo 8 turns. All right, we're gonna roll. Ready? The impact crater with uh, at uh, just prior to the subsolar point on the south side and the floor of it, uh, nearly even if there is one dark hole. But I couldn't get a quick enough look at it to see if it might be anything volcanic. God, look at that picture over there. There's the earth coming up. Wow, is that pretty? Hey, don't take that. It's not scheduled. <laughs> you got a color film, Jim? Hand me a roll of color quick. Oh, man, that's great. Where is it? Quick. It's out here. Just grab me a color. A color exterior. Yeah. Yeah. That one? Yeah, I'm looking for one. C-368. Anything, quick. Here. Okay. I think we missed it. Yeah, I've got it right here. That's, let me get up this thing. a lot clearer. Bill, I got a phrase that's very clear right here. You got it? Yep. Just take your several. Take right. several of them. Here, give it to me. Wait a minute, let me just get the right setting here. Now. Just calm, okay. down. calm down, Bubba. Oh, I got it right here. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. 250 at F11. Now there's a fair explosion over there. I did. I took two up there. You sure you got it now? Yeah, we'll get, well, it'll come up again, I think. Now tell me that is not great. I think my favorite part is William Anders telling Jim Lovell to calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Lovell. And also just how confident they were. Remember, these are not photos being taken with an iPhone where you could just look at it to know that you got it. He was literally like, click, mess around the exposure a bit, click again, and then like, yeah, I got it. But he will not know that he's got it until they go back to Earth to develop the film. So for all you kids out there born post iPhone, this is what it was like. Of this photograph, Anders famously said, we came all this way to explore the moon, and the most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. And I think what he meant by that is through this photograph, we got a sense of how delicate and fragile the Earth really is. I think that's something that I've heard time and time again when astronauts talk about their time in space. They return with this perspective of this little gorgeous blue Christmas ornament looking thing that they see in space. We are not the center of the universe, not even close, so there's this strong takeaway that the Earth is something precious and to protect it. And to be honest, I think that's a point of view that's not as easily achieved sitting here on Earth. Today, the original Earthrise photograph and the camera that Anders used to take it 
are on display at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And NASA made a really lovely in memoriam video to William Anders, which I will post over on my Patreon if you guys want to see that. So that's the tale of the Earth Rise photograph and the amazing contribution that William Anders made to the space program. I mean, you take a photograph that will be with humanity forever? <laughs> Not too shabby, Mr. Anders. Not too shabby. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next video. I think that uh, what risks there are have been well considered and designed for to uh, attempt to alleviate these risks. And I think that the gain that we will get to our Apollo program and uh, the gain that uh, our country and the, all the nations in the world will receive from uh, this first step of exploration will certainly make any risk I might take uh, more than worth it.